paper. Y'all have a great race. How much do I drink and how much do I eat during the race? I try to stay as hydrated as I possibly can in these days leading up to the to the marathon. I I I don't hydrate easily. Um, I never really drink unless I'm thirsty, and I know that's bad. I know I should be eating or drinking half my body weight in ounces in water. And I think that might be a little too generous, but I think coming close to half your weight in ounces is a good thing. Um, you don't want to drink all of a sudden a lot of water in the last couple of days because that's what people are telling you to do because that could lead to hyponatremia, which has its own set of issues. Uh, but I just think whenever it's convenient to pick up a bottle of water, water is more important than any other liquid, I believe, um, know that you really need to stay hydrated. And as far as eating is concerned, um, I eat a well-balanced diet throughout my training. I don't depend on nutritional supplements leading up to the race or during the race. Once I tried a um, gel, there are a few gels I can tolerate, but you need to know what you can tolerate before you grab for any nutrition out on the race course. Know that you've tested the product and that you can you can consume it without any difficulties because the first time I tried that, I really felt I needed some nutrition and I almost gagged and I almost had to drop out of the race. So again, that goes back to make sure everything is tried and, and true with, with your system. But I think carbohydrates, you can't go wrong with carbohydrates from this point on. And you know, I remember before my first marathon, which was in Boston in 1979, I felt so full I could barely climb up and get myself into bed the night before. <laughs> Any other questions? Yes? How do you avoid hitting the wall? How do you avoid hitting the wall? Um, again, it's all about good nutrition and being hydrated, and it's also about knowing what you're capable of running on race day and not starting out too hard. You know, run at a comfortable pace so that um, you can change your gears if you want to stages of the event, again, as I said, if you're passing people, it's a lot easier up here mentally than it is to be passed. It can be pretty um, deflating to, to have people passing you in droves in the final stages. So um, we refer to that as negative splits. Not everybody can run negative splits, but if you can run a pretty evenly matched first and second half of the marathon, you're doing well. You know, so much about of marathoning is about what's going on up here. And if you're here, you have to be confident with the training you've done thus far to get here. Don't start second guessing yourself. Any other? Yes? What's the longest run you do in training? What's the longest run I do in training? Um, 23 miles has been the longest I've done in training. But if I am just doing 20, that's fine. So, how many of you have? have gone over 20 miles in training? How many of you haven't gone 20 miles in training? How far have you gone? 13? <laughs> have a great race. <laughs> <laughs> um, I really think, you know, if you can run 16 miles and you can be very comfortable at 16 miles, you'll be okay during the marathon. What I do, especially again for you first time marathoners, 26 miles can seem like a real daunting distance. I mean, that's a long way. What are we doing running 26 miles? Can't we decide this over 13 miles? Um, so I break the course down into loops that I'm familiar with from my home. So if I go out and run a six mile training run, then I only have 20 miles to go. And then if I go out and run a 10 mile loop, um, then I only have 10. So if you break it down, or you might go out and say, I'm going out on a 10 mile training run. and you get to the 10 mile point and you say, okay to myself, and this is when you really need to be conscious of your, your, your pace, I'm gonna race a, six, a 10K. So you've done your 10 minute training run, now you're racing your 10K, then you only have 10 miles left. And 10 miles in marathon training is, is commonplace. So that just breaks it down so it doesn't seem as daunting as 26 miles. And especially for you first time marathoners, don't forget about the point two at the end of 26. I remember running with Lance and all he wanted to do was break three hours and we got to 23 miles 
and he thought he was um, going to make it, and I knew it was going to be really tight, so I really had to coax him along. And then at 25 miles, he knew he had it in the bag. I said, Lance, you're forgetting about the point two. And he had totally forgotten about the point two. And that's what was the critical piece. I had to remind him that it wasn't it wasn't a given unless he really picked up the pace at that point. That so was to um, break, that was to break the three hours. That was to break three hours. <laughs> Any other questions? How did I prepare for rain? Um, that's funny you ask. I don't think we're going to have rain. At least I hope we don't have rain. I remember. I had a long run planned on a very wet and windy day, and I called my training partner. I said, do you want to move this off um, until tomorrow? And then I said, no, forget about what I just asked, because <laughs> I need to get out there and experience the elements um, in case that's what we get on race day. So you can't let it psych you out up here. I'm sure many of you have trained in rainy and wet and windy weather. Um, and you just have to know that you're not going to melt and everybody else is in the same boat. And the less you have to think about on race day, the better off you're going to be. You, you just have to have confidence in what you've done to get there, and you can't keep testing yourself in the next couple of days. And just because you see all these runners going out to run, know yourself well enough to know that you've done what you needed to do to get here, and that you're taking away from your reserves. What's my goal for the, well, I just told uh, uh, the press corps that I've never dropped out of a race and I've never run over three hours in a marathon. So I'm hoping I can keep that record intact here in New York. You know, it's the marathon. Anything can happen. I mean, I have a goal um, in mind, but I don't have to share that with anybody. And I'm not even sure I want to share it with myself. <laughs> yes. What's my best accomplishment in running? That's a tough one. I mean, I really put a lot of pressure on. I mean, I wasn't a favorite going into the Olympics. Greta Weitz was the favorite. And um, there's something to be said for holding your cards close to your chest. Uh, and she let uh, somebody know that she was experiencing back spasms before the marathon. And all of a sudden, I heard that. And I thought, well, she's vulnerable. And maybe if I had a great day, I can feed off of that. And I just felt great that day. So, you know, I was, your question's very difficult. I would say the biggest win in my life was the Olympic marathon. I would say the race of my life up until last year was the Olympic trials, which I ran 17 days after arthroscopic knee surgery. And I really didn't know if I'd be able to get to the starting line. But I had faith in all the training I had done to get there, and I just couldn't let go of that. But I put a lot of pressure on myself last year at the Olympic trials when I said publicly that I wanted to break 250 at 50 plus. And so knowing what that pressure was like going into that event, that's why I've decided not to share any, <laughs> any goals or aspirations here, because it's the marathon and anything can happen. I, I would like to be under three hours, and I don't want to drop out. Um, but, you know, we have different motivations at different times during our careers, and, and, and that's why I'm asking you, if you don't have a goal, at least internally for Sunday, have a goal in mind before you go out to the Verrazano Bridge. We just had a question here. What's my most beautiful experience where? In, in a marathon or here in New York City? What was my most beautiful experience here in any of the New York City marathons? I would say I really wasn't in shape in 2001, but I felt really compelled after 9-11 to come here and run, sort of as a, as a method of helping to heal the city and the country and the world for that.